it's time to talk about everybody's favorite band, Metallica, or as I recall, the guy who introduced them back when they won, or sorry, failed to win their first Grammy back in the day. He was reading the nominees and he said, and the second nominee is uh, Metallica. And then they lost the award to Jethro Tull. That was the beginning, the beginning of everyone's fascination with Metallica. Truly amazing. Since then, that was uh, 1989 or 90, I think. I was in like sixth or seventh grade when that happened. And since then, Metallica has continued to be the band that absolutely everybody seems to think about and talk about and like. But as I have said before, until today, I had never actually voluntarily listened to an entire Metallica album. Obviously, I have heard the singles. I mean, I, I'm familiar with the band, but never before had I ever actually sat down and listened to an entire Metallica album from start to finish voluntarily. Maybe I was in the car or something like that when one played, but, uh, but that changed today. I said, I will sit down and listen to the entire Metallica discography so that I can react to this and I can give you my bad opinion ranking the Metallica albums from worst to best. I will give you my opinion on that as a Metallica, not a, I'm not a Metallica virgin because like I said, I had heard them before. So maybe I got to like third base with Metallica, like Metallica fingered me in the back of your friend's Honda Civic once in 10th grade, but we never went all the way until today. And we finally went all the way. And now that I've gone all the way with Metallica, I can give you my opinion on their discography from worst to best. So you can tell me uh, that my opinions are wrong and terrible and that uh, everything I like is bad and everything that I hate is great. So that's what we're gonna do. And also, I wanna thank Timu for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of them, Timu is an online marketplace with the most competitively priced products in tons of different categories. They have just about everything and the prices are honestly amazing. But that is not all. They also have free shipping and free returns for up to 90 days. And you can download the Timu app right now at the link in the description for even more perks and to shop my selected items. I got this DVD ROM drive for $11.88 and these badass sunglasses for $14.48. Hell yeah, brother. And this chain for only $7.98 plus this cool Transformers gaming headset. I mean, what more could you ask for? These are some seriously great deals. So if you want to check it out, download the Timu app right now at the link in the description of this video and get a $100 coupon bundle for free. Once again, download the Timu app right now at the link in the description of this video and get a $100 coupon bundle for free. Now, of course, I'm going to start off by cheating a little bit. I'm going to start off by cheating. The worst thing that they've ever done by far is not a whole album. It is this uh, underrated, um, un underappreciated masterpiece. We did it again from the Biker Boys soundtrack with Ja Rule and Swizz Beats. I bet you didn't know this happened. <laughs> it's on fire. Tonight. We are it's on fire. Radio. We on radio. The room of metal, yes. Any woman that won't please me, I give her up. Jaw, please. What a rude thing to say. Okay, obviously, Metallica, in my opinion, has a lot of weak spots in uh, their discography, but clearly this is the weakest thing they've ever done. This is godlike. I envy people who never have to listen to this. Well, I have bad news for you because it only gets slightly better from here because uh, the next worst thing that they've ever done, in my opinion, is uh, Lulu with uh, Lou Reed and uh, genuinely confused about how or why this happened. Genuinely confused. This is the table, yes. I'm the Where's the table? Of someone who actively despises you. I am the view. Here it is. I am the table. <laughs> I am the table. I am all this. Look, I don't know. I, I, I understand they're big fans of Lou Reed, and they were probably really excited to work with him. And I get it. I understand. Probably it turned out really badly. I can't imagine that anybody in Metallica thought this was good, but they probably just liked him so much and they had so much respect for him. 
that they just didn't have the, I don't know, didn't have the, the heart to be like, Lou, this is terrible. We're not going to use it. This is awful. Thank you so much for your time, but we're going to burn these tapes. That's what they should have said, but they didn't. And so because of that, this exists. Sounds like when your rocker dad links up with his old college friends to jam. It's bad. Um, Listen, again, I get it. I'm happy that they had the chance to work with one of their heroes. And uh, I, <laughs> this Rollins band. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's brutal. I'm never going to be able to hear Rollins band again. You know, whatever. I respect that they got the chance to do it. And, and what I really respect is the fact that they were able to like do this video with a straight face. Uh, I can't imagine that anybody in the band thought this was actually good and yet they powered through it anyway. That's how you know they're professionals. They made it through this entire video shoot without ever once cracking a smile. They pretended to like it while this Frankenstein zombie got up there and talked about being a table. They did it. Not their proudest moment, but they got it done. Don't meet your heroes. Don't record a fucking shitty album with them either. Good advice. Good advice. Next on our list of worst to best is St. Anger. Now, I know that this is probably going to upset some people because these days I feel like it's cool to think that St. Anger is good. And I understand that because... Lots of times what happens when a band does something, you know, different at the time, people, you know, hate on it unfairly because, you know, the band tried to do something different and rah, rah, rah. But no, this is actually terrible. I mean, listen to this. Why are all you millennials trying to pretend that this is good? It's not good. It's horrible. And this part isn't even the bad part. This is the bad part right here. This is the really bad part. I'm sorry. Like, I really don't understand why it's now become cool to pretend like this is good. This album sounds like a divorced guy yelling at his balls. <laughs> is the rest of the album just as bad? It is. It's terrible. It's really, 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 really bad. It's just genuinely not good. Yeah, if James could sing, it might actually sound decent. There's that. The snare legitimately is awful as well. You know what? I agree with this. I agree with this. My girlfriend unironically loves this album and it drives me insane. Um, <laughs> you really should consider leaving her forever. I mean, listen, I do not disagree. And you know what? I feel like that'd be a good story. Let's say your girlfriend's name is, um, I don't know, uh, Jennifer and be like, Hey, uh, where's Jennifer? We haven't seen you with her for a while. Like, Oh, we broke up. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. What happened? Uh, you know, the metallic album, St. Anger, like, yeah. Um, she listened to it once and uh, turned to me in the car and said, you know, this isn't that bad. And I just opened the door. I pushed her out. And that was the last time I ever saw her. I, I don't know if she's alive or dead. Frankly, I don't want to know. And I don't care. <laughs> James put his beanie low for the prison video shoot. It's not good, people. It's not good. It's really bad. It's one of the rare examples of the times where a band tried to do something different. Critics and fans absolutely hated it. And it really was as bad as everybody said. It's St. Anger is not good. And all you millennials trying to retcon it as something other than bad. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Now, next in my list of uh, worst to best rankings is, so they did Load and then Reload. They're two quote unquote sellout alternative albums. They're both bad, but Reload is the worst one. In my opinion, this is one of their most cringe songs. Hell yeah. Peel out, burning rubber. Fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. Ooh, sounds like Clutch. Very divorced dad, right? Very, very, very divorced dad music. Dad got divorced and uh, bought a, uh, a classic muscle car, got the Mustang of his high school dreams, and then started this band. Hell yeah. Lars going hard with that drum tutorial beat. Now, I feel like people... These days, just sort of don't really talk about this album. It really never comes up, as far as I can tell. At the time, people absolutely hated it. And in my opinion, for good reason, it's not good. And I feel like it's just sort of been forgotten. 
And that's probably for the best. It's just sort of, it's like, uh, you know, like the, the creepy uncle that uh, is a registered sex offender and he doesn't come to Thanksgiving anymore and nobody brings his name up. And if anybody ever asks about him, the family just doesn't answer, you know, like, oh, what happened to uncle, you know, Rupert? And they're just like, uh, well, so anyway, would anyone like some more stuffing? You know, we just pretend he doesn't exist. And uh, I feel like that's sort of, you know, the way Reload works. It's not bad. It has a theme and musically it has great songwriting, but it feels kind of corny compared to their more serious work. I agree with that. I mean, it's not complete shit like Lulu or uh, St. Anger is, but it's it's definitely not good either. <laughs> Looks like an intro of some song for the History Channel. Yes, uh, I think that's a good way to put it. And it sounds like it too. Like next on James Hetfield's Nitro Burning Funny Car Garage. And then that's the song that played and James Hetfield shows you how, you know, he's building his dream Mustang. Just like the one I wanted back in high school in 1971. Okay, and then next in the list, in my opinion, again, just my personal opinion, is Load, which is also not a great album, but it's not horrible. It's not as bad as people thought at the time. This came out of, what, 94, I think? This was the next album after the Black album, and so that was obviously the album that made them into just, like, complete giant global stars this was when like grunge and alternative was kind of at its peak this is when they cut their hair and people felt like they were selling out and you know trying to go grunge which you know maybe they were but listening to it now it doesn't sound that much different from the black album you know it's a little a little bit more alternative but yeah they cut their hair and they did the eyeliner that was a little bit cringe but this doesn't sound that much different from the Black Album to me. It's just sort of an evolution of that sound. Right? <laughs> Why is he dressed like Macklemore? Like, this sounds kind of like Inner Sandman, right? Their lyrics just shit the bed after justice. I can sort of agree with that, but I mean, who was listening to Metallica for the lyrics? You know what I mean? I don't think this is like an amazing album by any means, but um, I don't think it's the worst by any means either. I mean, at the time, people just absolutely shit all over this album. I mean, this was like the most hated metal album probably of like... I don't know, of my life at that point. I mean, especially because, you know, the thing with Metallica is that the Black Album really divided their fan base into either old school or new school Metallica fans. The old school fans are the ones that started listening, you know, with like Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets, and they wanted them to keep being like thrash. And then the new school fans are the ones that came with the Black Album. And so I think the old school fans were hoping that they would go back to being a thrash metal band. And then when Load came out and it became obvious that that was definitely not what they were going to do, then uh, people got pretty upset about it. Now, again, do I think this is great? No, but I don't think it's horrible either. I would say this is just like, okay. It's just okay. Not as bad as people thought at the time. That's like the upper end of their bad albums, I would say. And now we're getting into the lower end of their albums that are actually kind of decent. The next album in our list, which I would consider to be the worst of their okay albums, is Death Magnetic from, uh, what, 2008. Okay, so this is the album where they actually did go back to being thrash. This is what everyone had been waiting for. Remember, the last thrash album they put out was and justice for all which was from what 1988 1990 so fans had to put up with almost 20 years of like mediocre like alternative rock and grunge and shit like that that they basically didn't want and then finally death magnetic came out and they were saying you know every band says like oh this is a return to our roots we're heavy again and it, and it never is whenever bands say this is like oh we're going back to our roots they never do. It's always terrible. But they actually kind of did on this album. It actually does sound like, you know, if they put something out after Injustice for All, it might have kind of sounded like this. It is a bad mix, it's true. We got some thrashing. Sounds pretty good to me. We got some riffing here, right? Some solid riffing. This sounds cool, although, once again, no bass guitar. Bizarre mix. Here's my question. You have Robert Trujillo in your band. How do you not have any goddamn bass guitar 
<laughs> in the mix. How do you have one of the absolute best bassists of all time in metal in your band and you can't hear him in the goddamn mix? Where's the bass guitar? The whole thing sounds kind of like unmixed. Death Magnetic is the exact middle of their discography. Everything worse is terrible and everything better is legitimately good. I think that's fair. Yeah, so Death Magnetic, my issue with this album really is that the album art always made me think of like a really hairy pussy. Have you guys ever seen, I'd like you to Google this, but uh, not a bad album. I would say that's where it made me think like, okay, Metallica, maybe not as bad as everyone thought they were gonna be forever. Next up is Hardwired to Self-Destruct, which is from, uh, let me see what year that's from so that I don't get actually in the comments. It is from 2016. Again, for anybody who thought that Metallica would never make a competent thrash album again, Hardwired proved them wrong. It's solid, right? It's not bad. They're thrashing. My favorite thing about Lars is like the faces he makes, you would think from looking at him that he was playing like the most like over the top, technically demanding, you know, like Luke Holland, like inhuman shit. You know, he's going like, and he's playing fucking like four on the floor at like 105 BPM. And it looks like he's about to have an aneurysm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at this point in their career, you know, they'd been a band for what, 40 years or something, 35 years. You know, as far as thrash metal goes, there's a lot of other thrash bands that I like better than Metallica. I mean, you know, Sepultura, Destruction, Creator, Sodom, Believer, you know, Coroner even. The list goes on and on and on. Um, however... I think, you know, Metallica to me, it's what I would call like basic bitch thrash. It's like thrash for people who don't really like thrash. You know what I mean? Like if you're a real thrash aficionado as I am, I was very, very, very into thrash metal, you know, like in the early nineties. So I, w I went really down the thrash rabbit hole. And if you're a, a thrash aficionado, I'll give you an example. So to me, something like this, it's pretty cool. But for me, it's like, uh, I was more into stuff like this at the time. You know, this sort of thing. It's not the same song, shockingly. It's not the same song. Similar, but just better, you know? A little heavier, a little more aggressive. This is from like uh, 1988, I think. Yeah, so to me, Metallica, you know, very much like basic bitch thrash. But anyway, the point is Hardwired to Self-Destruct, a very competent album. I would say, you know, would I choose to listen to it? Probably not, but it's not bad. Now, this gets into what I would consider to be their good albums. So everything listed before, I would say is mid, bad to mid. I would say this is where we're getting to their albums that are actually good. And so the next one in my list is Kill 'Em All, formerly known as Metal Up Your Ass. This is when we get into their albums that I would say are legitimately pretty good. Yeah, the album art made me think they sounded like Slayer. It's true too, better mix than Death Magnetic. That's what's wild is their mixes from like the 80s sound better than their mixes from 30 years later. It's kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, I, would I choose to listen to this album? Probably not because, you know, I'm into like sort of the heavier side of thrash, but I will say that this is like, you know, legitimately good songwriting yeah as far as debuts go kill them all is like nirvana's bleach not great but definitely shows promise i agree with that you know and there's a lot of like every song in this album here's the, here's the thing with this album is it showed they could actually write songs it's not the heaviest thing in thrash you know there are lots of other bands that were heavier than they were but they had good songwriting like actual like vocal hooks and stuff like that so i can give them credit where it's due it's like legitimately good songwriting and, you know, I wouldn't be mad. This is like, this is burnout music, you know? So if you're like, I don't know, at a tattoo shop or a dive bar or something like this comes on, you know, I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at it. Now, if you put on load or reload or say in anger, I'd be like, oh, fuck this, I'm leaving. But if you put on kill them all, I'd be okay with it. I wore a metal up your ass shirt to Six Flags and they stopped me at the entrance and made me change shirt. 
Music that painters listen to while they're painting your house. Yes, that is correct. That's exactly what it is. Next up, this is an EP that I actually think is quite good. This is uh, the Garage Days Revisited EP. I think this is from 87, I think, which is one of the first things that I heard by Metallica from a friend of mine back in seventh grade. Um, he was really into this uh, Misfits cover, which I think is damn good. I got something to say. A lot of people I know got into him from this. Yeah, this is just a perfect cover. It is. It's a perfect cover. And Lars's shitty drumming is actually, like, perfect for this. Like, if he was a good metal drummer, it would sound awful on this. But he has the shittiness of a punk drummer, but it works. It's true. James sounded really good back then, too. He really did. This is, like, maybe vocally the peak of uh of james but yeah i would say even though this is a covers album and normally i wouldn't include covers and you know eps and stuff i think this is really good now this gets into what i would consider the actually really good like truly great top tier metallica albums again would i choose to listen to any metallica album there's only one metallica album that i would actually choose to listen to but the next albums I can say are, you know, legitimately, like objectively great classics. And the next four albums, where do we rank them? Well, I think it's pretty subjective. I think any of these four albums you could say are their best. But I will say the next one, in my opinion, is uh, Ride the Lightning. I do like this song quite a bit. This is catchy. This is a very catchy song. Yeah, Trapped Under Ice is a good one, too. What I remember of this album is um, back when I was in seventh grade in like 89 or 90, there was a couple girls, a couple stoner kids, rather, that had this shirt. There was this one girl. Her name was Amy. I don't remember her last name, but I was kind of scared of her. And there was another guy named Matt who had this shirt, who was like the, the head of the stoner clique. I was really scared of him. Both of them were like one or two grades higher than me. And at least back then, when you're in seventh grade, the kids that are in like eighth or ninth grade seem so much older than you. And I was like terrified of the kids that are in Metallica. This is, you know, before the Black Album came out. Back then, the kids that are in Metallica were like really scary burnouts, like kind of like Beavis and Butthead or something like that, but like mean. I was afraid. I don't know. This is like right after the satanic panic when everybody said that, you know, heavy metal and D&D &D, yeah, like Eddie Munson. Exactly. Exactly. This is like when Slayer and D&D &D and like Satanism all went hand in hand. And I kind of thought that maybe those kids actually were part of like, you know, some satanic cult or something like that. By the time I actually heard this album, I had already heard much heavier stuff. So I never really got into it. But listening to it now, I can objectively recognize that these are like really good, like catchy songs. What a great riff right here. You know, this is up there with Anthrax to me for like a chug riff. <clears throat> now Metallica is popular among aged out QAnoners and January 6 riders. Excuse me, that was not a riot. That was an uprising. How dare you? Those are a bunch of free citizens exercising their right to protest against Obama's corrupt government. Not on my watch, Obama. We're voting your ass out in 2024. Anyways, that's next on my list. Now, the top three albums. Again, it's kind of a toss-up. I'm going to say the next one on my list is Master of Puppets, which has, in my opinion, one of their best songs, Damage Incorporated. <laughs> This is what I wanted Metallica to sound like. Because, you know, I was into The Accused and Slayer and stuff like that. I wanted more songs like this. I mean, the whole album's good. There's not a bad song on it. And this is some solid thrash. Yeah, it, it is one of the best metal album covers of all time. The song Master of Puppets is cringe. I don't know. I think it's a pretty good song. I think it's catchy. Yeah, I mean, this album is great. You know, to me, it's like as far as like classic thrash songwriting goes, it might be the overall most consistent, like best classic thrash songwriting. I personally like Slayer and Anthrax better, but both of those, like, I don't think either of those bands have an album that is consistently as good in terms of songwriting as this album is both of them again i like them both and like slayer at their best 
I think is better than the Metallica at their best. But, you know, Master of Puppets is such a consistent album. Hard to argue with it. Now, we've got two albums left. And in the number two spot, this album is when they started to make songs way too long. Yeah, I agree with that. In the number two spot, we have Injustice for All. Overall, I do agree that these songs are too long or longer than they need to be. But, you know, this is when they got pretty progressive. Songs like Blackened, to me, again, I always wanted Metallica to just be like thrash. You know what I mean? Thrash. That's what I wanted. I kind of like this, like, really shitty guitar tone, too. Like, the production in general sounds like shit, but in kind of a cool way. I kind of like it. God, the... And I, I hate to say it though, but it's really true that the lack of bass guitar is rough. It really does hurt the album. Like I actually like the drum and like the guitar, the guitar tone is terrible, but I like it. The drums sound like they were recorded in a fucking closet, but it's kind of cool. I really do wish that it had a little bit more bass guitar on it, which I know is like such a boomer thing to say, but it's kind of true. It holds it back. But still, I think, you know, as far as like the pure like thrash albums by Metallica. I personally think it's the best. You know, if you said Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets, I think that's a valid choice. Um, but I think, yeah, I agree with this. There's something about this shitty production or no bass that makes it sound good. And I don't know why. I agree with that too. Like there's something about it. Like it's objectively sounds like ass, but I kind of like it. Yeah, great lyrics, very strong songwriting. One is the song that really introduced me in Metallica. The video scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. It came out when I was in sixth grade, I think, and my friend's older brother was into Metallica, and he played this video for us on MTV, and it scared the shit out of us. Uh, still to this day, and it's actually pretty disturbing. And so that brings us to the number one Metallica album of all time, in my personal opinion, the Black Album, and my favorite song, by Metallica is American Badass. Still untouchable, 10 out of 10. I mean, technically it's a cover of Kid Rock, but it is legitimately great. That's right, when they cover Nickelback. God damn it, this sounds so fucking good. I still, to this day, I think this is probably the best mix of all time of any metal record ever, and I don't think anybody will ever beat it. It just, it sounds perfect. To this day, it's perfect. And this is my favorite Metallica song too. Perfect mix, perfect song. Most importantly, it gave us this. Without that album, we would not have this video. I bet Donald Trump watches this video now and then. I would not rule it out at all. And so for that reason, if for no other, I declare that the best Metallica album ever recorded, they will never top it. I don't think anyone will ever top it. It is a classic. I am a certified Metallica, not really liker, but I will say the Black Album is arguably the perfect metal album. I don't think anybody will ever top it. That is my opinion. And that does it for this Metallica deep dive. Stick around for next time when we uh, look at the discography of other great artists like Shinedown, Kid Rock, and uh, Saliva. Join us next time for that. Next on James Hetfield's Nitro Burnin' Funny Car Garage.